So as some of you may know, I was a fan of Spoonie no and Brother, but there's always like some form of ego with them. You brush aside when you're a fan, it turns into a massive problem because of some stuff that you couldn't change and some stuff that you could that he didn't. You you have to you have to go to go back to that mindset of this was the second wave of video content online. Right, so there's no real rules for that. Like it wasn't like today where you have to have a DSLR camera and you have to have a capture card or whatever. It wasn't like that back in the day. So Spoonie comes from that kind of second wave after the Younger Regainer, after Armac 21, all that type of stuff. There are some instances where his ego started to show uh, its ugly head and the thing that I want to like uh, talk about is he actually like won the award, the Open Web Awards, uh, the funniest person to follow and what he did really kind of pissed a lot of people off back in the day instead of like thanking the fans and he did that by the way it, it wasn't like you know he, he didn't thank his fans he did but there was a large portion of that beat that was specifically to do with he, him being trolled and whatnot uh one thing you don't feed the troll like that's like internet etiquette 101 if somebody's gonna piss you off don't show it never show it but he did and the trolls got what they wanted at the end of the day they got what they wanted they got their response that they always craved that was the first sign of spoonie i know just lashing out at every because some people people just uh, didn't like him and didn't like how he uh, reviewed um, their favourite what not their favourite video game. You have to look back at this now right. Booney was a, a provocateur of the reviewing side of the internet. He went after the most beloved franchise of all time. Fucking Final Fantasy. Like being a provocateur is one thing. But you're gonna have to take criticism at some point. And Spoonie just didn't. Or didn't like take it the right way. The next thing that I have. To show my kind of thesis statement of. Was Spoonie when he started. Did he have an ego? Or was that ego just always there? Because that, that's kind of what, what I want to like put in this video. Is that was Spoonie always this way, or was he kind of changed by the internet and by like internet culture and whatnot? Because I'm really fascinated to like to think about that. When it comes to Spoonie being controversial and being outspoken, really was not a big thing for him. He always kind of did that. When it comes down to like criticism, Spoonie was the best to uh, to take it. He could give it. But he couldn't really take it. What do I mean by this? Well, he did a review of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And the, the review was nearly two and a half hours long. It, it was long. It, uh, j the joke was it was longer than, than the film was. But that's not really the issue with the review. Because as we all know, that uh, version of The Amazing Spider-Man films, they're shite. And nobody really talks about them now at this point. What kind of... Uh, um, was kind of a massive red flag to me looking back at Spoonie's kind of like discography or whatnot was his response to the review. I've I've shut down the comment section to that to that vlog because I, you know, honestly I haven't really paid that much attention to the YouTube comments. I guess I've been paying attention to my own uh, my own forums and my own comment section because of the far more intelligent discourse going on. I had forgotten what a fucking toilet the YouTube comment section is. Just saw the video and were so horrified by the YouTube. Ah! Ah, no! Ah, Spoonie made a long video! No! But they still felt compelled to make a comment about it. You know, to to announce they are, they're taking a stand. You know, if you didn't like it, don't fucking watch it! And yeah, I was telling my fans not to watch a video if they didn't like it. I wasn't putting a gun to your fucking head. Don't fucking watch it! So, that's it. That's all I'm telling you. If you are so childish as to unsubscribe because I express an opinion or the way I express an opinion to them, 
that you will unsubscribe, you will not be missed. With Spoonie, it was kind of more, it's taken a very personal level. In the video, you can kind of, you can really see that affect him. He brushes it off by saying like, oh, it's just, you know, YouTube comments. And they're always garbage. And I was so used to my website being way better than, you know, YouTube and things like, yeah, because you delete, you know, people off the website when they didn't do reviews really so you know i wonder why you liked your own website <laughs> but um yeah no i think like when you do a review you're going you have to like consider that you're going to half your audience and half is gonna agree with every single thing that you say and the other one the other part is just going to absolutely hate it and they're gonna hate your guts for like the next two weeks and everybody else is kind of in the middle you know they can understand where you come from but they disagree slightly with a few things and that's really it but Spoonie it was very much he took it very personally worst way possible he could take it kind of the, the last thing that I, that I put down the last one was kind of like the first it, it sowed a seed in my head of thinking was Spoonie always like this or was there something else entirely that I'm missing? So the last one, the last example that I, that I can think of really is it's a very free commentary that he did on his, um, on his website. As my own site has grown and my own business has grown, there's, my, my schedule is rather hectic. I work virtually every day. <laughs> takes two weeks out of my life. Uh, this one particular took like 10 days just to get it shot and then I have to take a couple days to recover. It really, you know, two weeks, that's, that's a lot of money when it comes to, you know, how much I make or how much product I have to put out. Involved, who's to say whether or not people were going to get paid? Uh, they were talking like they wanted to fly me down to be part of the new, the new channel. Um, I, I just don't know that that was going to pan out. Doug was going to kill off the Nostalgia Critic, and, and we all pretty much knew that, or at least I did. The title character of the of, of the entire website, and I know Ask That Guy is basically it, but, you know, Doug was, was sinking his own, uh, his character. So it, it was just kind of this thing where things were changing, and I figured I should change with it. It would basically mean I'd have to sink my own show, which I wasn't ready to do. I'm making decent money off the show. I'm not really getting into the controversial tweet. This kind of commentary, just it kind of just showed me that, you know, there's always kind of this uh, ego with Spoonie and his ego kind of got in the way with a lot of stuff. And now, look, you know, it's 2020 now. Looking at his life, you know, April left him, you know, a couple of months ago and that's, you know, that's really sad. You know, his house is being foreclosed. It's really sad you know, to think about, you know, an internet legend like Spoonie ending up in such a just a, a, a really bad place. And he could be right next to the angry really gamer if his life just worked out a little bit better than it was and then it is right now. Commentary track. It's kinda of all about like of how he didn't need, you know, Channel Awesome anymore. He didn't need uh, the walkers, you know, and he didn't need anybody else except for him and his website. And that kind of all buckled you know, about a year after, two, three years after that, thinking of was, if he didn't, like, leave Channel Awesome, like, if he didn't make that tweet, if, like, didn't, like, fire him, would his life be this way still? And, you know, it's a hypothetical that I, I can't, I don't know the answer to, because it's kind of in the technical spooning that his big mouth kind of <laughs> let, like, let him into trouble. It's kind of in the technical to the character. But again, it's, it's just, it's, you know, I was just thinking there, right? I was thinking, like, if he ended the Spoonie character with the Ultima game, like, that would have been such a fucking good ending to it. Like, his whole, like, tenure, like, would have ended with the Ultima games and whatnot. I think it would have been, like, a lovely send-off with him. And, like, if he if he stopped the Spoonie character and just went, Noah, to talking about really games and reviewing them, that's a really, really nice, you know, end to his career as Spoonie. And now he's changed into Noah, which is never gonna happen, you know. 
because it's already too late for that. I have, w I have another like video idea that I want to do, and it's in defense of Banjo Kazooie and Nuts and Bolts, where I look at, at that game now and I say like, well, it was like hated like badly because of a bad reason. Was the game I was like a massive disappointment, or was it kind of like good? But anyway, so that's I I'm rambling on now. So uh, Speedy Door. Talk about Spoonie. Forever.